When studying organic compounds, it is important that you know how to first draw structural formulas. When we say structural formulas, unlike the standard molecular formulas we used to study in high school chemistry, we don't anymore just involve the atoms and sometimes their numbers. We also need to involve their bonds. And assuming that you watched my previous video on atoms in organic chemistry, you may have seen these examples when we were counting the bonds to accomplish the octet rule. Well, we drew bonds, right? So by definition, these guys are structural formulas already. So just a reminder as well, carbon has four bonds, nitrogen has three, and oxygen has two. And these are the same atoms that I will be using for our examples in these structural formulas. So let's get this out of the way and go with the first type of writing structural formulas and probably the most time-consuming, expanded. As the name implies, when you expand the formula, you write everything. You write all the atoms and all the bonds, and the bonds can be single or double and triple or triple. The lone pairs also are required if you're teacher or if the situation needs it. But in this particular recording, I will just pretend that those lone pairs are invisible. So let me have an example of an expanded structure. So let me have a carbon that has three bonds and then one will have a double bond just for variety. So when drawing a formula for the first time, of course, it may be a question in our head to ask, is it already complete or am I missing something or am I going beyond the required? So for example, carbon. We learned that carbon has four bonds. So if it only has one bond with it at the moment, then I should know I need three more to reach the magic number of four. And how about the carbon at the middle? It has one bond. It needs two more. I mean, it has two more. So if you add that, that's three. It needs how many more to become four? just one. So I'll write that here. And then this carbon is currently sharing two bonds. And therefore, I need two more to reach four. And I can just casually write it here. You don't need to worry about the positioning of the hydrogen. Like, is it, if you're thinking, should I put it diagonally or should I put it vertically? It doesn't matter. What's important is that you don't uh, have the wrong number of H's because if you lack a hydrogen or even if you have an excess hydrogen, that's the more crucial mistake. Let's have another example of an expanded structure and this time let's have two carbons but for a twist, let's connect them using a nitrogen. We will still use the same principle. So this carbon has how many bonds right now? Two. How many more do we need? Two to reach four. So I just write that H, H. How about this carbon? It has two at the moment. So I, again, I need two more to reach four. But is the magic number for nitrogen also four? No, it's not. The magic number for nitrogen is three, right? It should form three bonds to follow the octet rule. So I currently have two. I just need one more. And we can put that here. And again, you may need to put a lone pair depending on the depth of your discussion, but I'll keep it clean right now and leave it like this. Now, if you go to the condensed version, as the names imply, condensed or abbreviated, when you condense something, it's like you're comp compressing it, right? Or making it smaller or squeezing it. And then abbreviated is what you do when you try to shorten a series of words. So in either way, it will mean you make it smaller. And how do you make an expanded drawing smaller? You just imply the single bonds. And when we say implied, it means they are still there. It's just that we make them invisible. But how do we make single bonds invisible? What we have to do is to first recognize that we write the central atom, the one where uh, most atoms are attached, and then this carbon is attached to three hydrogens via single bonds. But since we cannot anymore write that, we can just group them and write it as H3 after the carbon. So I'll write that here. And then the next bond is a single bond, so I don't need to write that anymore. I can just straight up write C. 
but it has a single bond to H, so we also imply that and just group this into CH. Double bonds are occasionally omitted also in condensed formulas, but for many beginner texts, we keep this in the condensed formula just to make it clearer, especially if the reader is a student who has just started orgchem. So let us put that here. And then this one, C, and then two H's, we can condense to CH2. And that's it. So surely, this one takes much less space than the expanded one. So truly condensed. But one major element or one major feature of the condensed structure is the parenthesis. And it can serve two main purposes. First, we can use it to shorten a long chain. Because it is totally possible that we have already a condensed formula, yet it still feels like it's taking forever to write. I'll give you an example. I can write CH3, which by the way is standard for a terminal carbon because it's always going to have three hydrogens at the end. And then the hydrogens in the middle, assuming they're not attached to something else, are just CH2s. But what if I have a lot of them? So even if this is already a condensed structure, it feels like you're still taking time, right? Because there's just too many carbons. So what we may do is to recognize that all of these CH2s are the same and group them together in a parenthesis and just add the number pertaining to how many they are after the parenthesis. In this case, four. There are four of them. So if you feel like you want to make this even shorter, this structure is equal to just writing CH3, CH2, four CH3, right? So this one takes care of this. This one takes care of this. And this one takes care of the four CH2s. Saves you more time. Your teacher, if you are taking this in college or in school right now, should accept both, but it depends if they are imposing that you should use parentheses as much as possible. But another way that we can use the parentheses is to depict branching. And what do we mean by branching? Well, let me first offer to you the opposite of branched. In compounds, we can say it's linear if it's not branched in the sense that if I have carbons connected together, it's as if they form a straight line. Like this. Carbon, carbon, carbon. It's straight, so this is a linear compound. Or this also. From here to here, it's just a straight chain, so this is also linear. But the moment that a carbon or two go out of that straight portion, then these things are the ones that we can call the branches. So let me write an expanded formula just to show you an example. So maybe I have CH3, then CH, and then I'll make this a carbon, and then CH. As you can see, here, here, and here is a linear chain of carbons, but now this is the branch. So now, if I write this, it could be something like this one is going to be, so we're going to write an equivalent formula. So this expanded is going to be written in the condensed form of CH3. And then this one is CH. And then since I'm starting to branch out, that's when you start to open the parenthesis. And then that is CH3, right? And then I close the parenthesis indicating that I am now done with the branch, I am now going back to the main chain. And then I just write the last CH3 like so. But if we are looking at this, you may also notice that the CH3 is beside another CH3, so technically they are the same. You can argue that we can even make this simpler by just grouping them as parenthesis CH3 times 2. And that is totally acceptable. So if I'm going to write that, this formula is equal to the formula CH3, CH, open parenthesis CH3, then 2, right? This is this, this is this, these two is this. Now, what if I want to make things even simpler? I have now a skeletal formula or a line angle formula 
where instead of writing the letter C, we just write carbons as dots or points. And the hydrogens directly attached to those carbons are implied or, again, invisible. But in this case, let's use a previous example just to, you know, see it in the expanded and skeletal forms. Let's convert this formula to skeletal. So it's equivalent to what appearance? Well, I have three carbons, right? So that means I should have three dots and we should connect them at certain angles so that I can know it's one, two, three carbons, which is why sometimes we call it line angle bonds. But now these two carbons, which are these two, are connected by a single bond. So that's this. But how about these two carbons? This is a double bond, right? So you have to reflect that here. So if I write that again, it's first, second, single bond, and then the third carbon will be connected by a double bond. Now, this double bond before in older textbooks was written like this, maybe to emphasize that we have the same atoms holding the same bond, but in modern texts, we just leave it like this. Some people worry if you should put the second bond on top or on the bottom, but it doesn't really matter. As long as it looks like a double bond, that's good enough. But now, how about the hydrogens? Again, we hide all of them, and so these three H's are just here. They are still there, but they're invisible. And so is this H, and so are these H's. And I think that's the challenge for most students who are still getting acquainted with this. Because what if their teacher asks them, count the number of hydrogens, then you might need to do this manually again. Oh, carbon has one bond. I need four. I need three more. So there are three hydrogens hiding here. And you have to do that one by one. But eventually, as you practice, you may find out that you're getting the hang of it and you'll be able to count two or one or three hydrogens faster. The payoff of such difficulty or challenge is that if you look at this and you compare this one, this one definitely is way, way, way faster to draw. How about a structure with a non-carbon atom and I want to make it skeletal? Uh, I don't know. Let's add nitrogen again. And we know nitrogen has three bonds, right? So one, two, three. Well, again, in a skeletal structure, these are just points, single bond. So I just represent that as this one. <laughs> That's fun, right? This is already all of this. But single bond, and then how do you condense this? In this case, instead of in taking the hydrogens of the nitrogen as invisible, we just condense that as H2. So single bond, N, H2. So let me write that, single bond, N, H2. Again, don't pair if you need it. But it's always there, okay? But how about if I replace this with oxygen? How many bonds should oxygen have to follow the octet rule? Only two, right? So if it has one bond right now, it just needs one more, and then it's two. So that's one H only. So if I write this in the condensed form, it's OH. And even if you write that, if ever, it will also just be OH. But you still need to indicate this because it's not invisible, okay? So as long as it's not carbon, like nitrogen or oxygen, you must still write the hydrogens in a skeletal structure.